It's the first day of school and you may be asking yourself, what am I going to do with these kids? And I have some suggestions for you. They can work for all grade levels and pretty much any content area too. So let's get started. Hey, I'm Maggie. I am a high school English teacher. I currently teach 10th and 12th grade English. And I'm really excited to share with you what I do on the first two days of school. Now, my first two days are really the days where I teach procedures and I get to know the students. So all of the activities and things that I'm going to be doing are not necessarily English related, so they can work for any content area that you want. The first thing that I have my students do is make a name tent. So I go and buy some packs of cardstock. And I have directions up on the board for the very first day that say, find a seat. Yes, I let them pick their own seat on the first day. And grab a piece of cardstock, fold it hot dog style, and start writing this information on it. So here's what I have mine put. You can have them put literally anything that you want. So I have them start with a phrase that they say all the time. So mine is, oh my God, I have to tell you. An adjective that describes them, so that's an English thing, so I put loud. A hobby that they like to do, so mine's singing. And then their most used emoji, and we joke about how your most used emoji should not be an eggplant, and I don't want to see an eggplant on your card. So, they write their name really big right here. Um, mine just says Mrs. Hughes. And then, this is one of the first grades I give them, and every day when you have that little block of time that they need something to work on, but you don't really have anything for them to work on, I tell them to make this beautiful. And then the second week of school is when I actually give them a grade for this. The reason I love this is because they set it up at the front of their desk, and then I can learn everybody's names. Their job when they walk in the room is to pick this up, their job when they leave the room is to turn this in. The other reason this is great is because to do attendance in the beginning we know takes a long time, but you can look at where you have these stored, and I'll store them by class. Um, and if there's any left in here, then you know that student is absent. So today was the second day of school and I had one still left in the crate. I did my attendance. I had one kid who was unaccounted for and I was able to see very easily that they were absent. I love these. You can have them do pretty much anything you want with these. They don't have to be this big but I do recommend you get thicker than just paper because they'll just flop over but the cardstock works great. Okay, so here's what I need for you to do. I need you to set up your name tag so that it's facing that way. So like if somebody was at the front of the room, they could see your name, okay? Hopefully you know your name, so it should not need to be facing you. I do rotations and stations a lot in my classes, so I really wanna kind of teach the procedures for that from the first day of class. So we do question stations. And I think I originally got this idea from um, Laura Rondazzo, but I kind of modified it for me and my students. And so what I did was I thought of about eight or nine questions that would be cool for students to answer. I typed them up, laminated them, cut them out, and then I lay these out on the desks and they put their answers on a piece of paper. So for instance, like this question says, one thing about Miss Hughes that scares you. Um, there's another one that says, what's your favorite Halloween costume ever? Because I love Halloween. Um, and then I have them answer things like, what does a good classmate do? What does a good teacher do? And we talk about that. So what the students do is they number their paper for how many questions there are. And then they will stay at the station for about two to three minutes. You can kind of decide how long you want them to sit there. They write their answer, they discuss. And then I have a doorbell. So I ring the doorbell. And when the doorbell rings, they know it's time to move stations. And then they get to the new station, and then they start on the next question. By the time they've made a whole lap around the room, they've answered all the questions, and their sheet is complete. And then we go over them as a class, and I just ask for volunteers who would like to share, and I don't force anybody to share anything, and then I obviously share my answers. So it's kind of a getting-to-know-you activity, but really they're getting to know their 
group mates that they're sitting with and not necessarily the whole class. I hated getting to know you activities um, when I was in school because I had anxiety. So I think this helps a lot with that. So question stations is kind of what I call that. Here is what's going to happen. I'm just going down the directions from here, okay? So here we go. You have your paper, yes. You have your name and first block on it, yes. It is numbered one to eight and you have skip lines, yes. Okay, you're going to start at the station that you are in, okay? So what's going to happen is when I say go, you're going to flip them over. You're going to read the question. You're going to write your answer with the number that it says. So if it says question three, do you write it under number one? No. no. Where would you write it? Three. Good. Okay. You're going to have three minutes at each station. Listen, for some stations, it's going to be too long and you're going to be sitting there twiddling your thumbs. And for some stations, it's not going to be long enough. Okay. So you'll just have to figure it out. All right. When you hear this, you move, okay? We're going to move this way. I'm, I'm telling you because somebody will go the wrong way. Watch. Grab the person beside you once we start moving and say, come on. We're going this way. Okay? All right. When you finish, you will end up back where you started with all eight questions answered. Does that make sense? Okay? Yeah. Now, since we are moving, you may not want people messing with your stuff. Also, you may not want to carry your stuff with you to every single station. So if you would like, you may put your stuff on one of the edges so it's not in the way. Because if not, you have to kind of take it where you're right there. Then we talk about non-negotiables, which is something that's kind of Englishy, but I talk about how I'm not going to accept work if it's not in a complete sentence and things like that. So then they actually look at the questions that they just finished, and then they see, oh, I didn't follow the non-negotiables. And I have them turn them in anyway, but then I tell them from now on it's unacceptable for you to not write in a complete sentence with a capital letter at the beginning and a period at the end. The first letter of every sentence is capitalized. And then, so what do you think the last one is? Uh, every, punctuation. Every has, um, a punctuation mark is needed at the end of every sentence. Okay? But you could use that to teach some other procedures in your room that are non-negotiables. Um, and I talked to them about what non-negotiable means, and it seems to work out really good for my students and I. Then... Everybody always reads the syllabus on the first day, and I'm just like, boring. So, what I do is, I give my kids a copy of the syllabus, and then I tell them their homework is to read it. And that's it. That's all I say about this. We do talk about what supplies they need and how to sign up for Remind, but that's it. Their job is to read it for homework, which comes into what we're actually going to do for day 
too. I also have my kids do an exit ticket from the very first day, just like we kind of did a bell ringer for the first day, which was kind of get ready for class um, and start working on your name, Tim. I think it's really important that you start setting um, examples for how class is going to be from day one so that there's no complaining and no changes later on that kind of throw them for a loop. So they do the bell ringer to get their name tent ready. And then their exit ticket, I ask them which one of the nine non-negotiables is going to be difficult for you. And they just write it on a sticky note and put it on the door as they leave. And that's it. And that's really all we do for the first day. Any extra time that we have, I get kids sign up for Remind if they need help. I answer specific questions that kids may have. And I give them time to work on decorating this name tent. And that's it for the first day. Now, day two is where we do a little bit more, but it's still pretty procedural and things like that. So the first thing they do is they come in, they get their name tent, they set it up so you can do attendance really easy. And for their bell ringer for that day, I tell them to read their syllabus and quiz each other because there's going to be a quiz. And the reason is because I told them to read the syllabus for homework. Now, I don't tell them until after they've taken the quiz, but I do not take the quiz for a grade. The reason that I have them do this, though, is I teach them that if I'm telling you you have something for homework, there's a reason that I'm having you do it. And for the most part, all of the kids go, okay, I get it. <laughs> so it's a really easy 10-question quiz. I just print it on half sheets like this, and it has questions like, how often do I put grades in power school? Name one of the things we're going to read this semester. What's worth more, quizzes or assignments? Just easy stuff like that. The other reason I like doing this quiz on the second day is I get to teach my students kind of our testing, quizzing, assessment protocols from day two. So since all my tables are in groups, I have them, I talk to them about how we turn the desk so they face the front. You should be able to reach out and not touch other people's desks. You put your phone up, you're silent, you stay seated. And then I'm able to say, okay, from day two, this quiz that doesn't really matter, we can get all the kinks worked out before we take a serious quiz or test. And then we go over it together and I have them grade it. I don't tell them until they get back to their group that it's not for a grade and then we actually trash it. But I still think that it's a really good lesson. Then, the next thing that we do is I give them a room tour. And I literally walk in a circle around the room and talk to them about all the different things in the room. This is where I also explain Student supplies, the turn-in tray, the absent work containers, picking up papers as you come in, um, how to use the flexible seating, where the clipboards are, and my bathroom procedures. All of that is housed in my room tour and kind of procedures tour. I make these really big letters from A to M and post them around the room. And I tell the kids that we're going to have a scavenger hunt. And the scavenger hunt is literally 13 of the things that I talked about in my room tour and procedures tour and they just have to read with their group what it says so this one says this is where we do not line up before the bell rings so then they go okay that's the door so they look at the door the door is a letter M so then they write a letter M for number one I got this idea from somebody, I have no idea who it was, but I love it and it's great. And what I do is the first three groups, they get them all right, I give them a prize, like a sticker or an eraser or something, and then they think that's really cool. But I make sure that all the groups, even if they're not first, get everything correct so we can make sure they understand the procedures and where kind of things are. After that, that really doesn't take as much time as you think it would. Um, so after that, we usually will do I Wish My Teacher Knew, which is I give the students an index card and I have them write down something that they wish their teachers knew about them. And I tell them it can be funny, it can be serious. Um, I've got things before that said like, I have a pet lizard. And then I've got things before that are like, I live by myself and we don't have running water. So, you know, we get kind of all over the place things. I have the kids not write their names on them so they're anonymous and then I just read them so I can kind of get a view of the class in a nutshell. I really enjoy doing this every year and 
I kind of do it multiple times throughout the year because every time they'll write different things and you learn something about kind of your class as a whole. I just make sure I tell the students, don't put your name on it. And also, I'm not going to be reading them out loud. I'm not going to be sharing them because it's personal. So, after the I wish my teacher knew, then I just give them time to continue working on their name tent and making it beautiful. And then I give them their exit ticket. And their exit ticket for the second day is to tell me what the bathroom procedure is. So, for instance, um, they just write it on the sticky note, they stick it by the door, and then I can make sure that everybody in the class understands what to do if they need to go to the bathroom during class. You can do this for any procedure or anything that you've taught them that day. It's just to make sure everybody understands. And the cool thing is, after you read all of them, it's kind of a really easy informal assessment that you can use to see, did everybody understand what I taught today? Because if everybody writes the wrong thing for the bathroom procedures, then I did a really bad job teaching it. So, it's not for a grade, it's just an easy way for me to tell. The last bit of class is working on that stuff, and I also help kids again with signing up for Remind and kind of walk around and ask questions and kind of chit-chat and laugh with them and get to know them. Like today, some of the kids were talking about TikTok, and so we joked and laughed about TikTok, and we talked about the stick, my Vine stickers that are on my water bottle, and I just kind of chilled with them for the last like 10 or 15 minutes or so. I think that's good because we know the first couple of days are rough for everybody. That also gives me time to kind of get my life together before the next class comes in. And that's it. Really, I think the beginning of school is about teaching procedures, getting to know your students, building relationships, and learning their names, um, and just getting them used to the routine of class. So I would just make sure however you do class on a normal day is how you should do class on your first couple days of school. You should do a bell ringer if you do a bell ringer every day. You should do an exit ticket. You should teach them how to take a quiz, even if it's not for a grade. Um, teach them how to ask to go to the bathroom and how to work all of the stuff in your room. And I think it'll just help you have a smoother year. This year, we have a Thursday and Friday are the start of school. And then we have a weekend. And then when they come back Monday, we're ready to jump into content because I've got all that stuff out of the way. So hopefully this helps you and I hope that you have a great school year. Let me know if you have any questions and tell me down in the comments, what do you do on the first couple of days of school? I want to steal all your ideas. Bye.